get much closer with all the things we've been through. <laughs> we couldn't. Isn't that the truth? I think Rivanna and the university are closely associated. Well, well they're wonderfully kept and, and maintained. It's a joy to see them. There's several things that I like about the club. A lot of it is friends, doing things with friends. I love the conservation issue and um, the beautification of our area. I was not aware that the Garden Club was involved in so many different areas in the community. They are involved in conservation, uh, community projects, and not just one, but several. Education, beautification, conservation, and preservation. Margaret and Buster and I and some others, I guess, were really conscious of, of doing something to Main Street because when I came here in 1942, I was just horrified because I'd never seen <laughs> a town covered with smoke and black ash before. Coming from California, it was a real shock. I'm not gifted at flower arranging. I'm so glad that lots of other people are. Well, actually, I didn't do a lot of arranging with Dawn at Monticello because Dawn did the arrangements herself. She didn't, she didn't need any help. And I'd go to my little place down below in the cellar and the, the uh, gardeners had uh, taken my list of what I wanted and put everything, cut it, condition it, put it in water and everything. And so all I did was just arrange it like the Queen of Sheba yeah. or somebody. Yeah. I mean, just go in there and do it, you know. I worked with Garden Week well, ever since I've been in the club. We often get people, bus loads from Canada, you know, we'll get a bus of people, of be a garden club from England. And they really are just so eager to see our gardens. And of course they want to see the university. And as Dawn said, the uh, pavilion gardens, they're open to the public anytime. But during garden week, uh, you know, they're really special. Oh, I just love them all. I did have favorites, of course. There were pink ones. When, we, when I was first in the garden club, with the, the pink iris was the big rage. This goes against everything the garden club preaches. I think it would be bittersweet. Wildflowers just to take right out of the garden and put in a vase. And daffodils are my great favorite. For how near is this particular flower to the standard of perfection for this one? What should it look like and how close is it? But the other favorite flower was Queen Anne's Lace and I always used those in my arrangement if I could. I guess I have to say lilies uh, because they, they're so spectacular. The Commonwealth Award is given out every year by the Garden Club of Virginia for a project somewhere in the state. The uh, 47 clubs in the Garden Club are able to send in nominations for this award. And this year, in 2011, Rivanna won it for our project, the Hatton Ferry. We applied for this award, and of course the Hatton Ferry is very special. It is the last hand-pulled ferry in the United States. Fortunately, we have um, some gals in our club who are brilliant horticulturists, and they have chosen and will continue to choose plants that are going to be particularly good at preserving the banks. The Garden Club of Virginia was approached about perhaps being willing to fund restoration of the gardens and um, evidently the um, gardens had fallen pretty much into disrepair over the years. I think, you know, different people lived here and everybody did whatever they wanted to in their gardens and there wasn't any sort of overall plan. The upper parts of the gardens are generally pleasure gardens and the lower parts of the gardens in the original 
the Jeffersonian plan were um, vegetable gardens, fruit trees, probably a few chickens running around. The uh, restorations are funded uh, through Garden Week proceeds. Of course, these gardens here at the university were big long-term projects. But, uh, but the proceeds of Garden Week really have funded all of this. One of the times, uh, the funding went to restoring the trees at Miller School. Uh, there had been a tornado back in the early 80s, I believe, and all the trees, or many, many, many trees were leveled at Miller School. So we financed the planting of a, a lot of trees out at Miller School. We did a lot of work out there for many, many years. As an example of a local conservation project, we uh, adopted a biofilter at the Claudius Crozet Park. We did the plantings and we helped to maintain that. And last year though, for instance, uh, waterways were our concern. And so we, we had a speaker who, from the county who discussed with us the controversy that's brewed for many years locally about how to um, ensure a water supply for Charlottesville and Albemarle. Re recycling is uh, important to me because I'm interested in the environment and I think we're very trashy people and throw things away and we shouldn't. This, uh, this jewelry, it was left over from the roofers when we re-roofed our house about 10 years ago. They did a good job of cleaning up, but as I went around, uh, the bushes had pieces of, of copper like this, and I just took it and, and made uh, jewelry out of it. And uh, become more aware of what we can do every day um, such as using cloth bags when we go to the grocery store and not tossing plastic into our trash. There's so much to learn. There's also a lot of collegiality, great kindness. You watch people teaching people who have never exhibited before. Oh, you always learn about flowers and gardening and what to do and how to arrange. It's been fabulous and in, 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 informative and fun. Each year, the state has a forum and it's beautifully done. They represent all sides of an issue. For instance, this year the topic is uranium mining. And they had about 20 speakers and panelists representing both uh, the industry and the conservationists who are concerned about uranium mining. Usually our education initiative for our own members for that year is has to do with the uh, what the state initiative is. In the last several years we've done things like give money to the schools for education on planting projects and educating the children about planting and how to take care of gardening and um, conservation issues. We've given money to the Miller School for their arboretum and again educating the children there. Funds that are raised from this go into our general kitty, but all monies raised by the Garden Club of Virginia are, are for preservation and restoration of historic gardens throughout the Commonwealth. And the workshop just uh, begins about three weeks before the actual bazaar when you condition and put together the various components that go together at the workshop. It starts at either 10 or 10.30. And by 11 o'clock, there isn't a cookie or a piece of candy or anything. It's just over. It just goes like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People come in and it's gone. Our members, who have also been busy making wreaths and flower arrangements and everything else that goes with Christmas, are also doing the baking. Well, they all go quickly. We just don't have anything left. It's a great experience and a great way to bring the members together. We have three big flower shows, the rose show and the lily show and the daffodil show. And uh, they're always a lot of fun. If you only know the name, then 
and you grow healthy daffodils that are beautiful, then you you can do all the other part of showing it isn't as difficult as people imagine it is. If you if you enter enough classes, you will win some ribbons. I usually get some blues, uh, and I'm very pleased about that. <laughs> I remember the arrangement that I thought was the best one I ever did, and Dawn did too. She came over and looked at it, and she said, I know you're going to come home with a blue ribbon. Well, it happened to be in Fairfax, and I was driving through Gainesville and had to go over the railroad track and the arrangement fell flat on its face, so <laughs> it did not make the blue ribbon. <laughs> staging committee. Well, I've never staged anything in my life, except my children. But <laughs> it was just a horrible thought, because I think I was the only new member there, only young one. Anyway, we did very well, except for the rape of the lily. It was the Empress of India, this fabulous um, lily. Beautiful, big blossoms like that. It was a specimen. That a man, I think, from Oregon or somewhere brought it. Well, anyway, the, in those days, they did present the lilies with the pollen on each flower. Somebody at night came and took the pollen off. And by doing that, they can impregnate another lily and make a new um, variety. Now, we don't know who did this, whether it was somebody, a grower or something. I don't know, but it, it was terrible. And it would happen at that time. <laughs> we felt really morally responsible. In those days, you had to be observed. You had to be interviewed before you got in the club. You didn't just join. No, Hazel Phillips and Mrs. Mitchell came to visit and came to call with white gloves. I was visited, too, by Mrs. Wink. And she came to call, and she was very proper. White gloves, hat, and you know, I was just terrified. I, and now if anybody showed up in gloves and hat, I think you'd ask them to leave because you'd think they were in the wrong place. just the being together. Through joys and sorrows, they have been right with me and very supportive. And I just look forward to seeing them every month and always hope that maybe there will be some excuse in between our meetings to be with some of them. <laughs>